we're still talking about formulas, but now we're going to do circles and circumference and diameter and radius. And there's going to be links in this video's description to help you if you need it. I said this before the last video, I'll say it again if you missed it. You'll be given a paper with algebraic and geometric formulas to use with the GED math test. So you don't need to memorize them, but you do need to know how to use them. Circumference of a circle is its perimeter. It's the distance around the edge. It's that blue circle. Diameter is the distance through the center from one edge to another. It's a line segment with endpoints on the circle. And radius is the distance from the center point to the edge. And the radius is half the length of the diameter. See? It's half of that length. And it's a line segment that connects the center to any point on the circle. So the diameter can go in any direction as long as it's going through that center point. It doesn't matter. It's still the diameter because the circle is the same distance all the way around from the center point. See? Same with the radius. It doesn't have to be going here. It could be going up this way. It could be going this way. Okay? So because 2 of these will equal the diameter, we could say 2 times the radius equals the diameter. We could also say half the diameter equals the radius, or the diameter divided by 2 equals the radius. This symbol is a symbol for the Greek letter pi, and it equals the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of the circle. And it doesn't matter what size the circle is, the ratio will still be circumference divided by diameter. So we say circumference divided by diameter is going to equal pi. And pi is an irrational number. It can't be accurately written as a fraction because it never ends as a decimal. It's considered a non-terminating decimal. Take a look at this. Here's pi, and I wrote some of the digits, but there's 2.7 trillion more digits for pi. That's really irrational. We can't write that as a fraction. There's no way. So we use the first three digits, 3.14. Square root of 2 is irrational also. All right? Rational numbers can be written as fractions, but irrational ones can't. In math, we use an estimation for pi as 3.14 because we can't use all the digits. We also use 22 sevenths as a fraction. And that ratio C over D, or circumference over diameter, is equal to pi. See? So we can say it's approximately equal to 3.14 because we're not using all of pi's digits. And this means that we can multiply the diameter by 3.14 to find the circumference. We can also divide the circumference by 3.14 to find the diameter. And if that's confusing, let's plug in some real numbers and see how that works. So we have circumference divided by diameter equals pi. What if I had 10 instead of circumference, we had a 10. Instead of diameter, we had 2. And instead of pi, we had 5. Because we know 10 divided by 2 equals 5. That makes sense, right? But we can also make the 5 the denominator and say 10 divided by 5 equals 2. The circumference divided by pi equals the diameter. See? We just moved it over, just like we did this one. We could also say 5 times 2 equals 10. That means pi times d is going to equal the circumference. And that's what we're going to use to find circumference, this c equals pi d. We can switch the formula around depending on what we're trying to solve for, circumference or diameter. And the formula for finding the circumference of a circle is c equals pi times d. We're going to use 3.14 times the diameter. And the diameter of a pizza is 10 inches, what is the circumference? So we're going to use this formula and we're going to plug in the 10 inches for diameter. So we've got approximately, because remember we're not using all the digits for pi, 3.14 times 10, the diameter. We get 31.4 inches around. Now, because 3.14 3 is, 3 is really close to 3, we can actually estimate a circumference because it's about three times the diameter. See, 3.14 is very close to three, isn't it? Like 3.1 is close to three. So if you just want to get a rough estimate of a circumference, you could find the diameter and say, oh, it's about 10 times three is 30. You'd be close, okay? 
The radius of a pizza is six inches. What's its circumference? Now remember, it takes two radii, that's the plural for radius, it takes two radii to make a diameter. Because the radius only goes halfway, the diameter goes all the way across. All we have to do is multiply that 6 by 2 and get 12, then we'll have the diameter. Now we can use our formula. 3.14 times 12 is going to be approximately, because we're not using all the digits of pi, it's approximately 37.68 inches around. Okay? That would be pi, that would be the diameter, and that would be the circumference. See, we got our formula. It doesn't matter if the C equals is in the front or the back. It's still the same equation. Now for area, we use area. We use A equals pi r squared to find the area of a circle. So that means when you see r squared, it means r times r, doesn't it? So we're going to do 3.14 for pi and then r times r, the radius times the radius. So if the radius of a pizza is 8 inches, what's the area? Well, the radius is 8. We're going to do 8 times 8, 8 squared, to do the r squared, see? So the area is approximately 3.14 times 8 squared, which is 64. We do 3.14 times 64, and we get approximately 200.96 inches squared with a little 2 exponent, or you could say square inches. Either way is correct. What is the area of a pizza that has a 10-inch diameter? Well, the formula says radius squared. So if they give you a 10-inch diameter, just cut it in half, right? Because half of the diameter is the radius. So we know that the radius must be 5. So we plug it in to our formula, and we get 3.14 times 5 squared. Well, 5 squared is 25. We do 3.14 times 25, and we get 78.5 inches squared with a little 2 exponent, or we can say square inches. Just remember that the double wavy line, that wavy equal sign, means approximately, because we cannot find the exact answer with pi. And there is a pi key on the GED calculator, but you'll probably save time by just using 3.14 as a decimal or 22 sevenths. Just remember... Because we aren't multiplying or dividing by all the exact digits of pi, our answer is only an approximation, and we'll use the approximate symbol. Now we've got this double-looking circle. What is the circumference to the nearest centimeter of the larger outer circle? So the circumference would be this outside measure. Everything inside doesn't matter. We're going to use circumference equals pi times d, and it's giving us that from the center point to this line is 2 centimeters, and from the center point to this edge is 3 centimeters. Well, that 3 centimeters is the radius, isn't it? It's going from the center point to the edge, and we need to use circumference equals pi times diameter. So we just double this. 3 times 2 is 6, so we know the diameter is a 6. We do pi, 3.14 times 6, we get approximately 18.84 centimeters. So to the nearest centimeter, because that's what it wanted, we have to answer exactly what it's asking. It's not asking for this. It's asking for the nearest centimeter. That would be 19 as the correct answer. And they could trick you. They could have something like this as one of the choices, one of the five answers, when really the answer is 19 because they want the nearest one. Okay? So if you're taking notes, to find the circumference of a circle, when we know the diameter, we use C equals pi d. When we know the radius, we use C equals 2 pi r. To find the area of a circle, when we know the diameter, we divide that diameter by 2 to get the radius and then use area equals pi r squared. When we know the radius, we use the same formula. We just don't have to do anything to it. We just plug the radius in. Okay? Here's the last thing I want to show you, and this is kind of important because it's probably going to come up on the test. The formula for finding the circumference of a circle can be written as c equals 2 pi r. And if we know the circumference, which expression can be used to find the radius? So what they're saying is they want you to solve it for the radius. Which of these would be the correct formula? It's really a lot easier to answer this than you think because we've been doing this in algebra. We know that this c equals 2 pi r will solve for c, because it says c equals, right? So it's solving for c. We want it to solve for r. So what we can do is divide both sides of the equal sign by the 2 pi. 
that will isolate the R to one side of the equal sign. It's going to turn this into a giant invisible 1, isn't it? And now look, on this side we have C divided by 2 pi. And if you look, C divided by 2 pi is number 3. So our answer is number 3. So when you see something like this, it's not that difficult, okay? You just divide both sides of the equal sign by that, create a giant 1, so you have 1 R, and now on this side you've got C divided by 2 pi. Isn't that cool? So you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 277. There's an Algebra 1 3.7 video, and it's going to actually come up as next in this GED playlist. And you can learn to rearrange formulas to solve for a specific, specific letter just like we did just now, okay? And then the next GED lesson is going to be about volume. We're going to do rectangular solids, cubes, cylinders, and there'll be links in this video's description for extra videos. And that one's following next, and there's going to be a link to the previous video that we did on triangles and parallelograms, and we did the area and perimeter for those, okay? So watch the next video about rearranging formulas, because it's really going to help you, all right? It's a lot of stuff that we pretty much covered uh, in Algebra 1, but you may not have seen that, all right? So just watch that one video. It'll help. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.